Perfection is the conditioned state or quality of being free or as free as possible from all flaws or defects. Perfection is presented to us in different ways and it is entirely a subjective adjective, not as objective as many might think. But sometimes we can all agree that some games are perfect. By collectively agreeing on the product's quality, we jump to say that it is quote unquote perfect for X or Y reasons, or generally that lacks any flaws. This is something that especially applies to media and entertainment. In movies, people collectively agree that films like The Godfather, Citizen Kane, and Blade Runner 2049 are quote unquote perfect movies. To me, for example, Train Spotting, Sicario, and Drive are a perfect movie. They're amongst my favorites by nature, and I think they are perfect by an academic definition, but there is a certain bias there. While they may not be technically flawless, they do fit the bill for me. What makes media flawless is a group of distinctive characteristics, elements, and generally every aspect of its production, and when they set to achieve a goal with said elements and ultimately achieve it, in games it works the same, only taking into account more characteristics that are not presented in other media like gameplay or general player interaction. I'm going to use similar examples for the games regarding the majority of players, they can collectively agree that The Last of Us, Half-Life 2, and Bioshock fit said idea of perfection too many. But what makes a game quote unquote perfect? Perfect does not necessarily mean flawless though. Titles that are considered perfect by myself and others do contain flaws that are recognized, yet this does not demerit the title's value and importance according to the players. Perhaps because if we were to put them in a scale, the good or better elements will always weigh more than the flaws themselves. I have personally come to the conclusion that these elements make a game perfect for me, emphasis in me. That'll be the story, the pacing, the characters, the dialogue, the gameplay, the world, the music, and lastly, the protagonist. Let's take time to analyze this first. To no one's surprise to me, the narrative element comes first and followed by the experience mechanically speaking and then followed lastly by its technical aspects like graphics, animation or music. A game needs to tell a good story, it can be as fun and as entertaining as it wants but with a bad story it goes nowhere. Pacing is crucial when telling a story, a good story goes nowhere if the pacing is overlooked. The last thing you want is for people to lose interest or care for your story or the characters. A game with a great story and pacing wouldn't be complete without exceptionally written characters. Good characters feel alive, genuine, honest, with a purpose. Dialogue is in large part what shapes them, and how they interact and express themselves end up defining them. All of the narrative related attributes are important and I don't mind playing games that focus on that rather than on the mechanical experience itself. But a game with a strong gameplay that is fun, engaging and entertaining goes a long way, especially in this media, and I believe it can be easily appreciated by many, many more people. Do you know what else is important and makes games remarkable, memorable and makes them stand out? Well-designed worlds. Worlds that are immersive, that tell different stories and that are inviting and unique. Exceptional soundtracks go a long way, they live rent free on your head for years and years to come and you probably have them in a playlist somewhere, a good soundtrack enhances the experience tremendously. Last but not least, for many a good or bad protagonist makes or breaks the experience, ultimately perfection is a subjective matter once again, while it is remarkable that many people consider something good or perfect and this fact might help elevate the culture value of a certain product, it is also normal that many don't agree with it and that's simply how it is. Perfection or something like that. Many of the games you and I like do not fill the bill and every characteristic that makes a game quote unquote flawless, that being according to me or according to the general public and they are not supposed to. We tend to elevate things according to perception, taste, ideas, previous experience and culture quote-unquote bad or quote-unquote imperfect games occupy our list of favorite ones and they might even be based or judged depending on the amount of fun we have. They achieve the title of perfect not necessarily by following a step-by-step -step academic definition. An opinion I read stated that perfect games are those who stand out amongst the rest when it comes to player impact. Not only in a mechanical way, many games stand out for the feeling alone. They mix mechanics and gameplay to convey an enjoyable experience, 
those games can be memorable in and out of itself, but leaving a player something to remember is a must. A few tangible examples of said games, based on the ones I've played, are Borderlands 3 Spider-Man for the PS4 and Forza Horizon 5. For the quote-unquote feeling alone, they stand out, but looking back at those titles I mentioned in the beginning, The Last of Us, Half-Life and Bioshock, ultimately utilize every element to their advantage, but if you think about it, they've left an enormous impact on players and this is the backbone of the theory. The paradox of something being quote unquote perfect because it is imperfect is an interesting thought too. Imperfections are characteristics or traits that end up creating a special bond or connection maybe with a product or game. People who might be aware of said flaws say in a game or a movie might even feel more inclined to stay with it longer. My friend absolutely despises League of Legends but they can stop playing it. Love or addiction, that is up to you. Taking into consideration the subjectivity aspect, to some, they may not even be imperfections in the first place. The problem with speaking about said concept is that it leans too much on the subjectivity aspect. A character's set of imperfection end up ultimately becoming their ultimate set of perfections, the bond between the player or viewer and the character itself. If we switch it up to a game, for example, people remember certain games fondly because of bugs or errors or because of how goofy something is or even tedious and frustrating mechanics, people still love those games. I touch on this briefly on a different essay that you can watch here. Even in a social environment, obviously nobody is perfect, those imperfections complement us and are a part of the human experience, if you will. In speaking about the human experience, I think we humans are obsessed with the idea of perfection, which is, I think, something intrinsically natural. I have a quirk of listing things I like for a compulsive reason. I like seeing things in groups, that's why I love letterbox so much and I do it with games as well. As tempted as I am to spend time sharing with you some of my favorite titles, this might be a good fit for a different video entirely. What I will say is that there are games that I personally consider to be perfect and I've had trouble scaling them down or putting them down off their pedestals and I don't think I'll ever will. On the contrary, this feels like a comprehensive emotion to me. And if you're a fan of the channel, I think you already know which games I'm talking about. But at the very end, and I didn't want to say it like this, but who cares, hey? We may agree on perfect games or media, but we'll also never agree because we people simply have preferences and there lies the ironic complexity and the simplicity of it all. The obsession of creating a perfect video essay about the idea of perfection and being struck with the concept that something that seems so complicated can be so simple at the same time. Thank you so much for watching, consider supporting my Patreon if you feel like it, if it is in your means. Other than that, wear your masks, stay in sight, the pandemic is not over yet. And well, thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.